At some point during one of these shows, someone asked, why would you replace your factory speakers? Well, because. Let's take a look at what is in the shaker system from the factory. We'll start from the back. In the back we have this guy right here. We have a paper cone with a foam surround. It does have the acoustical foam that's gonna allow it to marriage up to the rear deck. It uses a neo magnet. The basket is made out of plastic. Not bad. But what we're looking at here is this is paper and it's in the rear deck of a car. This is where the sunlight is gonna come in and we use some real crappy materials for that in mind. Paper. If you guys have ever taken a speaker out of a car that let's say three or four years old, what happens? The paper, well it fades and eventually just turns to dust. Foam Really not the most UV thing out there. Granted, the window is going to have UV and tint. That doesn't, this still is not the greatest material to use for a rear deck. Moving on to the front. In the dash, we have this tweeter right here. Now, as far as tweeters go in factory, size-wise, this one isn't too bad. This is a full one-inch cloth tweeter, so it's going to have a nice smooth sound to it. Neo magnets, got a capacitor on it. This is not a bad tweeter. I didn't really sit and listen to it, but as far as like if I was to look at this tweeter, I'd be like, well, that's, that's not bad. Back to the mid-range in the door, we have this three and a half inch standard two-hole three and a half. Uses a neo magnet, has 12 and a half watts of power handling, and it is an eight ohm, which is what we saw earlier when we were metering these things. This is made out of paper. The surround is made out of cloth. It's got a little bit of acoustical foam to help it marriage up with the door panel. Three and a half wise, it's not terrible. I mean, a lot of the three and a half use this. It is in the door, so you don't have to worry about too much UV. However, it is in the door, which means there's a possibility it's going to get wet because when rain comes in the door typically it splashes this way into the car and then it'll run over this. So here's the subwoofer or the mid base. We don't really call the subwoofer even though technically in the system it is considered the subwoofer. They used a much thicker acoustical foam on here. This is this is really thick stuff. It's almost like a closed cell even though it's clearly open. It's not as open as this. This is really spongy. This is not. This is so this is gonna have some impact behind it. They went to the full size big magnet so it can handle some decent power. This one has a 25 watt power rating at 4 ohms. This one is also 25 watts. The tweeter is 12 and a half watts at 8 ohms. So both these guys were 8 ohm which is what we saw on the meter. These both were 4 ohm. As far as the material this is made out of, this is what they should have put in the rear deck. This is a like a polymica resin cone. Almost feels like plastic but it's probably a little better. Has some form of a rubber surround which is nice. Plastic basket. The problem with plastic baskets is especially on subwoofer drivers like this. They're great when they're in the door because they're not gonna rust or corrode or anything like that. Not that we ever see too many of those with the standard baskets that are treated. But what happens is when this magnet gets really hot, this plastic sometimes isn't rated to hold that. And what'll happen is the magnets actually just fall off. As far as woofers go like this, that is actually playing the deepest sound in the car, using a plastic basket really isn't the best idea. But this is what we took out of this car and put in the Flax Series Focal. For the sub and the rear speakers, a BHA 2105 pack harness should do the trick. There's two harnesses that come in that bag. One is the power harness, which isn't gonna fit, but it's gonna have the color wires we want on it. And the one is the rear speaker. This is the one we're gonna repin to fit all those wires. Next up is the one for the power harness. We wanna make sure we have all those wires pinned, meaning all 10. You could use one of these and get the BHO version of it, but it would be much easier in this case just to order the 12206 car AV harness. That has both the male and female end. Basically, it's a T-harness for this. You could order two of these also and not need this. We're not gonna need this because we actually have one already made up that we found in our box of goodies. What we need to do is we're gonna remove all this tape off of here, depin all this. For depinning these, we have this cool depinning tool that we do have on DNF tool drawer. Take the pinner, come from the back side of this harness, just kind of push it in. It'll lift up the tooth, pull the depinner and the wire at the same time. 
and they'll come both come right out. And the other trick, if you just say, I can't get this, we're gonna not need this harness. If you wanna just cut these to remove the pins, you can do that too. Looking at these two plugs closer, you will notice that the gray plug has a center pin here, or center drop down, and on the black harness we're gonna use, it's more off to the left, but it does click in, no problem. If you needed to, you could sand the bottom of the factory plug down. First up on the list is the brown, white, brown, blue, which is going to be the purples. In the far corner, the brown, white is positive. We're going to start with our purple positive. Click that in, and we'll go purple negative. Next to that is our white purple and our white orange, which is going to be gray. Gray positive goes first. And then the gray negative goes second. Just give them a slight tug after you plug them in. Make sure they're nice and tight. Flip it over on the other side. We're going to have our white green, which is going to be our solid green, which is passenger rear. Slide that in. Then it's going to be the green black. Then we're going to go white, which is our solid white and then i unfortunately destroyed my white black so i'm just going to pin it with one of the leftovers i had and there we go plug it in make sure none of the wires push out we have that harness all set and ready to go what you can do is just to make sure that all the pins went into the holes properly i like to take my tone generator and just go over them real quick with a tone just to make sure everything makes noise that one is actually out of the door right now. We have our, our T harness. Plug this guy in here. This one, the little nipple that's sticking down lines up perfectly. Goes right in. What we want to do is separate out the wires we're going to use, which is all the top row on the clip side. And unpin them from this side and get this extra piece off. And then we'll group them together with some shrink wrap. So I'm going to go over to the bench and do that real quick. I'll be right back. T harness is all set. Plug back into the amplifier here. And this will go right here. Here. And now I have my whites, greens, gray, purple. These are my signal outs. I'm thinking I'm just gonna solder some RCAs onto these so I can just plug into here. It is a low voltage output, it's not high level, so I'll be able to just plug it directly into the amplifier. We have this guy here. Only thing I need to do is attach these three wires here. So what I was thinking about doing for these six wires, put these guys, little bullet female connectors on the plug side, and then I'll put the male bullet connector on the other side. That way we can plug in, and then if we need to down the road, we can just simply unplug the wires that we've plugged in and plug these back together, and that way it'll be still a fully functional harness. That's what we're going for. That way, if we need to, we can plug them all back together. Tape up all the harnesses that we remove the tape on. The mystery of what is coming out of this factory radio, we're 100% solved. We know what we're doing. To recap, our signal for the little guys here in the door, the big guys here in the door, and the rears, all taken care of. We're gonna run new wires up to the tweeter. That's gonna be our three-way set there. We have four outputs, front, rear, left, right. It's gonna go back to the amplifier. We're good there. At this point, we're all set here, which takes us to our next point. We need to get into the back. We need to make an amp rack. You start running wires. So we've got a lot still left to do. This is a big thing off our list. This is something Something you guys should be doing first before you start on anything else. If you don't know, how can you run the wires? 